Hi and welcome. I was working on recent milling projects and I was running into issues with clamping. Not that I couldn't clamp, but that I didn't have enough uh, studs and the right length studs to do the clamping I need. I had the standard uh, clamp kit and I can see why a lot of people buy a second one because you always seem to run out of the one size you need and sometimes you need more uh, like you need an interim size and I didn't have that either and the solution to that was I would often need more bolts than I had up there so I bought a bunch of hardened bolts and the problem with these is they come in various sizes but they never seem to be the right length that you needed so then what I would do is I'd stack a bunch of washers up and I'd run out of washers. And I was thinking to myself, boy, it'd be nice to have some much thicker washers around. They could be really handy. I, I never seem to have the right thickness washer. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna make some thicker washers. Well, along comes Joe Pizinski in one of his great videos. And uh, he comes up with a tool to part off a lot of equal sized parts off of the lathe very easily and very quickly, which is what you want to do with washers. I mean, even with a DRO, it could be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Unlike myself, Joe is a professional machinist and really knows his stuff. If you haven't seen his channel, you definitely should check it out. And I am going to unabashedly steal his idea that he presented on his channel here. Not make it my own, but just share it with you because I need what he created. And, uh, I thought, wow, I'm going to have to modify my tools to do what his does. So let me just give you a little background. Uh, go over to Joe's site, watch his video. It's very informative. Uh, but it's about his Aloris tool post. And he said, oh, you know, there's this, there's this screw hole on the other side of your Aloris tool post. Now, mine's a clone, so I didn't even think the hole would be here. I'm really surprised that it is. But it is. And it's a threaded hole. In my case, it's 3816, which also surprised me. I figured it'd be metric since the tool post is uh, an Asian-made uh, tool post. The threads are really shallow, uh, about 300 thousandths deep on mine. And uh, he used this to build a, a, a tool that would mount on the back of the tool post that would extend out adjustably with an arm that would go forward that in combination with your parting tool would allow you to part off parts very quickly without trying to do measurements and make equal thickness parts. So let's head over to the bench and see what uh, parts uh, I need to do this. So I lucked out, strangely enough, I buy all these pieces from estate sales and I had this bracket that I didn't know what I was ever going to do with but I kept it anyways and it turns out it's exactly what I need. So uh, I've got this piece of uh, hot rolled here that I've already dimensioned sometime in the past as an experiment and I'm going to use that. Basically this will bolt through and hook to the tool post through one hole. The second hole will mount this guy which will extend out past the edge of the tool post and then this quarter inch rod will go through the center of this and that will allow me to set my dimensions. I'm going to make this tool real quick and I, again I recommend you head over to Joe's site and follow what he did because Joe is an expert and he is really good at explaining things. You'll find a lot of really valuable information on his site so check it out. Um, I'm going to make this tool, a lot of it off camera, because it's really very simple. You're basically going to punch two holes in this guy. One's going to be a, a threaded and tapped hole to hold a quarter inch bolt on this guy. And the other one is a through hole for the 3 8 inch stud. I'm going to have to modify the uh, length of threads on this guy. And I'm going to reduce the diameter of this cap so that it fits between the edge of this guy and the remaining edge of this part. I'm just using stuff, I, material I already had. I mean, this is a little bit narrower than I probably would have chosen, but I already had it, so what the heck. Um, once I've got that done, we're gonna take this piece of 01 tool steel. I was looking for some 4140 or something, but I didn't have the right dimension. So we're gonna make a bunch of washers out of this. We're gonna harden them, and uh, then we will be set on the mill. I'm gonna make as many as I can get out of this. I never seem to have enough, so this will be really handy, and these will be hardened high strength washers. All right, remember how I was so excited because I wanted to use this one, this piece that I already had because it was the right size? Well, guess what? It really wasn't the right size. So I had to make one that was about twice as long to get enough range because ultimately what you end up needing to do is you need to have 
the parting tool off the work with this guy just touching the work and then when the parting tool comes in to cut, this piece is no longer touching. All right, so setting this up for uh, repeat cuts. Uh, Joe Pizinski's solution was to use a straight edge or I'm using a piece of feeler gauge here. 21,000 is pretty thick. And you slide it along your part until you just grab the edge of uh, the edge of the part. The way I often do it is to uh, push the part in here and uh, just grab my 21 thousandths feeler gauge with the side of the part. And uh, then I come over the thickness of the, of the 21 thousandths for the feeler gauge. And then I come over the thickness of the cutter, which I have measured at 0.0775. Okay, so you set your cut distance here, and I want to actually, I set it to a quarter inch because I want to make quarter inch washers, but I'm going to actually leave a couple thousandths extra on there for grinding because I'm going to grind them flat. Not because I need to, but again, I like practice. So then you run this guy in, press that part, you touch, and then I'm going to use Joe's method for identifying when it's in contact by just putting my finger on here and feeling the vibration just as it starts to make contact. So we're gonna cut off our first part here. All right, so we've cut off our first part. And I just turned it off because I was making some minor adjustments here. We just bring this guy in until this lightly touches. Before that, it's really sensitive. There we go. And then you notice how this comes out of the way when the cutter starts to come in. I replaced the cutter. The last cutter was chipped and I didn't notice. Now I'm doing some thinner parts, eighth inch, and the same rule applies. I actually sped things up a little bit, it seemed to be working even better at high speed as long as you use lube. Dry, not such a good idea. Fortunately, I've got a good fan in my shop. this huge pile using the Pizinski method about uh, 15 minutes now I wasn't locking the carriage off between each cut to make you know to control accuracy alrighty so I've grabbed my stainless steel wire taken all my washers connected them together to make them easy to remove and dunk in the oil uh, this is 01 which is all I had I would have rather had 4140 but I didn't have any on hand so I know this is more expensive but I used what I had I've programmed the temperature controller using the nconfig software. I'm going to be using uh, Stan Zinkowski's uh, Hotshot uh, Duo uh, oven system and uh, to heat treat. So we're going to heat this guy up to 1,475 degrees. And normally you'd want to do this slowly if you want to deform parts, but these are just washers, so it's really no big deal. So we're going to heat this up quickly, uh, hold it there for a little bit, like about half an hour. Uh, exactly half an hour, that's what I programmed it to. And then we're going to dunk in some oil and then we're gonna turn around and put it in the regular oven, the, the tempering oven, the second oven, which we'll have at about 375 because we want these to be very hard. We don't care about tough, I don't want them to wear, I'm not worried about them cracking so much. So uh, I'm gonna head over to the oven, uh, pop this guy out now that I programmed it and start the cycle. Alrighty, so here we are at the Hot Shot Duo and uh, we're gonna Enable control power, enable heat. Haven't started a cycle yet, so nothing will heat up. Bottom oven's the hot oven. So we're gonna take my parts and I'm gonna set them inside the oven, make sure not, making sure not to short out any coils. And there they are. And uh, next I will 
preheat both ovens. I still have to program the uh, top oven to low temperature. I put a piece of steel in here, uh, not because I needed the uh, thermal mass, but because what I really needed was something that I could put the parts on that wouldn't get oil all over the insulation because they're gonna come out of the oil from the tempering bath. You know, after I pull them out of here, they're gonna be dumped in the oil to cool off and uh, then I'm gonna pop them right in here. So I will try and take a lot of the oil off, but they're gonna be really hot, so that's not gonna be a fun process. All right, here we go. So we're about to pull the guys out of the oven here. And straight into the oil. Okay, we're down to about 250 which is good, so I'm gonna let the oil drain off and then we're gonna put this in the tempering oven where it will sit for about an hour. We're coming out of the tempering bath and into the oil. All the oil is smoking like crazy out of there. There's a ton of mill scale on these. I could have wrapped these in stainless steel, but since I'm gonna surface grind them, I didn't think I needed the stainless steel wrap to help reduce the oxidation, but they did get a ton of mill scale. Uh, when I was bouncing them, some of the mill scale was uh, popping off. Alrighty, so here we are at the end of heat treat, and you can see a ton of mill scale. It's interesting, some of the parts were there in contact, obviously kept the oxygen away. Um, the ring is decidedly different now that they're harder. I uh, tried a file on them and the file just skates on them. So they're really nice and hard. I was shooting for high six, uh, low 60s Rockwell, like 61, 62. So uh, next stop, uh, we're gonna head over the surface grinder and clean up all this mill scale and make them nice and flat. Not that that's necessary, just want to. So here we are surface grinding all of the washers as a group. These are the, the small ones and I'm just trying to get through the oxide layer. Alrighty, here we are at the end, and I ended up with 15 thinner uh, washers, about an eighth inch thick, actually it's just under, and uh, four just under a quarter inch thick uh, washers. Um, didn't learn how appropriately how much material to leave for the heat treatment if you're gonna let scale build up. Um, I should have wrapped these all in stainless steel uh, with some little bit of carbon in there, and that would have prevented the uh, significant amounts of mill scale I got in these. Also, when I was heating them up, I just told the oven to heat up as quickly as possible, which Stan's oven really does a good job at going fast. And as a result, I don't know if you can see this, but there's some surface cracking in there. Uh, I'll try and get the angle for you. Maybe you can catch it. It's hard to see in the viewfinder. Um, so there's some surface cracking on the parts, and that can be uh, avoided if you simply cool it more slowly and more carefully. And there is a 01 schedule to do that. I lightly oiled these so there was no corrosion, so corrosion wouldn't build up on them. Um, the nice thing about these is they are hardened, they're very strong, and since I surface ground them, they're all within two tenths thickness of each other. So all 15 of these, besides being washers, will also be able to act as uh, fairly accurate spacers on the mill if I need to space something up and I don't need hyper precision. Same with the quarter inch ones. Uh, they're also very close to each other. They're actually like 220 five uh, thousandths instead of 250. Um, since I didn't wrap it in stainless steel wrap, uh, I ended up with a significant amount of mill scale that varied a lot from one to the other, depending on how close they were to each other. Some of them had parts that had no mill scale on it where they were pressed together fairly tightly because I just ran a wire through the whole lot of them. And other ones uh, had mill scale everywhere that was really thick that when I banged them together, came off in big clumps. So I had to move a fair amount of materials from these guys. Uh, that was my bad. I thought I'd get away with it, but uh, I did not. So number one, when you're heat treating, slowly get the oven to ramp up uh, according to the specifications, which I think is something like 400 degrees Fahrenheit per hour, no more, which means to get to the 1475, uh, I think that's up to 1200. That means you got three hours on the ramp up plus uh, the small amount to get to 1475. And I did it all in like uh, an hour, so or a lot less. Stan's oven really does a great job of heating up quickly. 
um, even with that kind of load. Anyways, Pizin Mr. Pizinski's tool, uh, check his link for his video down there. Uh, it's a very useful tool. Um, I got more consistency towards the end as I learned to use it m better uh, and get the feel for the vibration on the uh, probe. And I was able to get within a half a thousandth of thickness of each. Uh, when I started out, it was within a couple thousandths, and that's not nearly as good as uh, just practice. So uh, I recommend the tool. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.